Every once in a while whilst browsing the Switch eShop, a game comes along that instantly catches my attention, and on this occasion, that game was Squirrel Stapler. Developed by David Zizmanski, Squirrel Stapler is advertised as a short horror hunting game and a satirical take on low budget edutainment titles, and being a fan of both the 32-bit gaming era as well as the weird and wonderful, I knew that I had to give it a go. So drop a like, subscribe for more Nintendo Switch reviews, and let's check it out. So the unassuming main menu of this one features nothing but a stock image of a squirrel overlaid on a background image of some farmland, the game's title and a couple of menu options, with the settings menu containing some volume and field of view options as well as look sensitivity and gyro sensitivity, but if like me you're not a fan of gyro, you can just turn this one off by setting it to zero. You can then hit hunt to begin the game, and upon starting you're dropped into a very burr looking hunting lodge, where on a nearby wall we find a rather gruesome display, a flayed body attached to a St Andrew's cross, and upon approaching the cross we're presented with the first of the game's dialogue in which we discover our primary objective in the game, that being to head out into the woods, hunt down squirrels, and return the lifeless bodies to create a new layer of skin for our would-be lover. The rest of the lodge is barren though, apart from a note found within a blood splattered side room floating above a mysterious symbol, but this note quotes verses from something called the Book of the Grove, and a new note is presented to us with each passing day. Now as we head out into the woods, a message scrawled in blood informs us that in five days, God is coming, and the exterior woods are presented in a wonderful 32-bit visual style, complete with both 2D and 3D environmental features and the area itself isn't particularly large, but we're able to hit the X button to view a map of it to get our bearings. In the top right corner, we also have a compass as well as visual and audio meters which indicate how likely a squirrel is to spot or hear you, and the controls themselves allow us to walk, sprint or crouch to move more slowly or quickly, increasing or decreasing these meters, so there are some minor simulation aspects going on here too. Now, we find ourselves armed with a 5 shot rifle, with our health and ammo meters in the bottom left corner, and our squirrel count in the bottom right, and as we can see on this first day, we simply need to hunt down 5 squirrels, but our task is made easier every day, as you'll also find a couple of these dead atop some nearby poisoned grass. And we also find a tip of the day note nearby, providing us with a bit of guidance, and which changes every day. But other than this, all there is left to do is head out on a hunt. Now the hunting mechanics themselves are incredibly simple, and I recommend playing this one with headphones on, not only because you'll receive audio cues from nearby squirrels which will give away their approximate locations, but also because the sound design has a certain eeriness to it, and this is a horror game after all, so you might hear the occasional whisper in your ear which can really put you on edge. When it comes to taking down the squirrels though, it's just a case of pointing and shooting, pretty straightforward first person shooting mechanics, and you're able to aim down sights by holding the ZL button, but most squirrels take a single shot down, after which you need to head over to them to retrieve the lifeless corpses. Once you've obtained all 5 squirrels though, you can then return to the lodge and staple the bodies to your lover's body to restore her decency. Or alternatively, you can head out to explore the woods further, and there are a number of optional discoveries to be made out here. You have a variety of notes to find, some of which present you with facts about the squirrels, such as squirrels have urine release valves under their eyes and urinate on each other's faces to communicate, or squirrels delight in causing pain, and other notes which recount short horror tales and possibly hint at a backstory to the main character. You also have a few small outbuildings dotted about the place, including the Sin Shack, where you can commit dirty dirty sins, and finally hidden squirrel caches which unlock the secret giant squirrel mode. With each passing day though you come closer to meeting God, and aside from your basic squirrels, you'll also be tasked with hunting giant squirrels, and though the count of these doesn't change each day, 
The challenge factor does in fact increase a little, as you'll encounter ghost squirrels and the dreaded burr squirrel, which if you hear the terrifying call of, you best avoid lest you want to meet an untimely death and have to start the day over. Whilst not advised, you can attempt to take these down, and lid throughout the map you'll find ammo and health pickups, as well as energy drinks which will double your speed for a short duration. Successfully complete all 5 days though, and you'll finally get to meet a god and win the game, and while this will likely take you no more than an hour at most, the experience delivered by Squirrel Stapler is one well worth having. When all said and done though, while the gameplay is incredibly simple, it's the overall ambience and pitch black humour that really makes up for what it lacks in depth and playtime. The hunting mechanics are enjoyable and the additional collectibles and game mode provide added incentive to explore the world and give it a second playthrough, and I'd say that if you're a fan of other oddball games such as Fate and Betula or Paratopic, then you'll no doubt enjoy this one. Great little game though, and I look forward to playing through and reviewing the other titles that David has produced. That though is about it for this review, so if you found it helpful, do me the honours of dropping a like, and subscribe to the channel for more Nintendo Switch content. But for now, thanks to the patrons of the channel for their ongoing support, and to you the viewers for watching, and until next time, take care of yourselves, and game on.